and gentlemen, and welcome to North Shore Live Cooper's Corner. We're live, well, this evening. <laughs> it's uh, really uh, February 1st, and um, it's not evening, but um, uh, it's chilly out. And you can see by my what I'm wearing, it's, it's really chilly. It's, uh, and it's supposed to go down to 1 this evening. So I hope you're all dressed comfortable and warm and uh, you take advantage of uh, whatever <clears throat> clothing articles you have of warmth and use them, gloves, mittens, scarves, hats, whatever. Uh, and I know that there's a terrible uh, epidemic of flu, so uh, please uh, be careful and uh, don't mingle a lot. <laughs> um, you know, uh, what can I tell you is that uh, the safest way is to be separated from groups so one cough doesn't spread the germs and 20 people get sick because it's very hard to recover in this winter weather. But it's February and spring is right around the corner. I'll be wearing green pretty soon. I love spring. It's wonderful. Uh, so just to let you know, care for yourself and uh, specifically uh, take care of yourself. We have a wonderful gentleman uh, that uh, was uh, that came down here uh, <clears throat> from um, up north. Well, not so super far north. I mean, a couple suburbs up. But Ron, um, who uh, was very helpful with um, our last guest um, and um, uh, Joe. Uh, He's wonderful, a veteran. I, I need to tell you he's a veteran. And so uh, our program this evening is Conversations with uh, John Pierce, P-E-A-R-C-E. -E. Pierce, P-E-A-R-C-E. -E. <clears throat> and uh, he's wonderful. Wait till you hear his voice. I mean, close your eyes and listen to his voice. Or you can open your eyes and listen to his voice. He does wonderful. His voice is oh, outstanding. Anyway, he was in uh, uh, movies, and he's got pictures to show us and talk about that. And he's going to sing a cappella, a wonderful. And again, I must thank Angela Walker for her wonderful work and being able to send me these wonderful veterans who have served the United States of America uh, in military service and uh, are honorably discharged and wonderful. And I thank you, Angela. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I can't wait for our viewers to be able to hear John. So without any further ado, please let me introduce to you John Pierce, P-E-A-R-C-E, -E, John Pierce. Oh, how are you, John? I'm fine. I'm Listen to that voice. As long as I'm inside out of the 15-degree weather, I'm oh, it's fine. it's terrible. Yeah, it's pretty cold. How does anybody know if you're hoarse or not? Oh, I don't know. You know when I get a cold, it gets deeper. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> what a voice. Well, thank you. What a wonderful voice. I didn't have anything to do with it. It's just God-given. There it is. Well, he knew the right one to give it to, see? Thank you. He just did. And you, you brought a, a, a little bit of an album here. Right. To show that you were in the movies. Right, and, I did. Um, you were uh, a stuntman. Right. And um, so who all did you uh, appear with? And Well, I, I got my Screen Actors Guild uh, in 1971 in uh, Charles Bronson's film, uh, let's see, I don't believe I have one of those pictures with it, but, uh, and then I, I worked with uh, Richard Chamberlain, uh, did commercials with Tom Landry, uh, it's just, I, I did 30 years uh, in stunt work, and then as I got older, a lot of times, because of my voice and my look, in those days I had long hair. Oh, wonderful. And now I have no hair. Well, but, uh, that's, the, that's, that's the going thing. That's, you know. Oh, yeah, now that's, it's in style. Sure, that's so, style. Let's see, that's, uh, that's the way hey, I that's look. that's okay. You're, you're taking after my husband. You're sealing his look. How can you do that? <laughs> well, I like the kind of bald-headed goatee look myself. Well, he but, doesn't have a goatee, but he was Navy Air Force, so we'll yeah, say. I was Air that's Force. Okay. But, uh, you know, and then toward the end of my career, I was, uh, I was still doing stunt work well into my 40s, 
but then I was getting little bit parts because of my voice and because mm -hmm. I had a look. I'm, you know, I'm a tall guy and uh, and I had the long hair and I was I never played a good guy, ever. I was always a bad guy. Listen, if it makes money, that's okay. What's the difference? Oh yeah, and it the, was the good money. The money is green either way. Yeah. Okay. And, and I had a lot of fun. Then as I got older and moved up here to Chicago, I was still doing some stunt work, uh, you know, from Tucson where I started, and then um, started doing voiceovers. And got into uh, after American Federation of Television and Radio Artists. That's a that's a mouthful, <clears throat> and uh, did did very well with that. But then life moved on in a couple of places, and now I'm uh, I'm actually working at the uh, uh, federal uh, the VA, VA hospital, hospital up in yeah. North Chicago. Mm. I volunteer, and then I go to work. And so, what does that do? What what is work uh, opposed to the volunteer? Well, I volunteer to help out the veterans. Okay. Uh, the older veterans need help getting to their appointments, that sort of thing. Okay. In fact, this week I went over 4,000 hours of volunteer work. Wow. But then I go to work, I'm in housekeeping, which means basically I'm a, a, a janitor. Okay. But we do, okay. we do so much more than that. We disinfect everything oh. to try to keep down the infections, flu, yeah, yeah. all those infections. Absolutely. I mean, without yeah. us, uh, the, I mean, that's our job really is to keep wow. the place as clean wow. as it can be to keep it safe for the veterans. Wow. But it's, okay. it's a joy to help the veterans out. I, it really does is. That's good for my heart. Listen, you're a veteran as well, so one to one is okay. That's not a, that's not a problem. Yeah, I was a uh, Air Force firefighter, hmm. active duty, and then Air National Guard. Okay. And I enjoyed that too. So, and you were overseas? No, uh, actually, I wanted to go overseas very badly, and they have a wish list, and I wished for Europe, Asia, and they and sent it? me to Louisiana. Oh, okay. So <laughs> actually, it turned out great because the. The hunting, the fishing were great. The people were fantastic. The food was... Oh, Louisiana food. Oh, yeah. boy, it was good. And so I really enjoyed that, too. That's well, a lot of French cooking and stuff like that. Right, and a lot of uh, gumbo. And, gumbo, oh, yeah. I love that. Shrimp and whatever they've got there. The oh, yeah. Cow. Catfish. Oh. The catfish. Well, I was raised on the in Tucson, 60 miles from Mexico, so I was raised on hot food, Mexican food. Wow. So going to Louisiana was like... And no beachfront property there. No beachfront property. Uh, oh, my God. You know what I do now when I get off work? I go home and watch the travel shows of Europe so I can see what, because I wanted to go, but, you know, the Air Force well, puts you where you want to, where they where want they you to They want you to go. Yeah. Okay, okay, there, it's all right. But uh, I really like what's going on now at the, uh, the VA because we're getting ready to have the Creative Arts Festival. Yes, that's and March 1st. March 1st at okay. CLC. And it's all veterans, some of them singing, some of them doing drama readings. We have paintings. I've got leather work that I'm putting in as well. Oh, really? And the song I'm going to sing today, I'm going to do. Now, um, the, uh, the artistic approach for the veterans, uh, are, are, those, uh, um, are those articles for sale or just for show? Or? No, just for show for the most part. I don't know anybody who actually sells I mean, if they're doing stuff. painting, they have more than five paintings, would they sell anything? I, I assume they would. Uh, a lot of times they're painting about their experiences in Vietnam okay. or Afghanistan, you know, they're, and uh, I've seen a couple of guys do some dramatic readings about their experiences. It's therapy. It helps them sure. understand where their head's at and their emotions are at. <clears throat> I was very lucky in that respect. I, as a firefighter, I, I saw a lot of, uh, you know, not really nice things, but it never affected me that way. I'm, I'm fine with it. I do leather work, and I've had people come up and say, boy, I would love to buy that, and I go, no, no, no. That's so what do you do with it? What, what is it that you create? Um, what, I'm a knife collector. I oh, have been my entire life. Okay. So when I buy a knife, it comes with a sheath. Yeah. And I look at it, and I go, oh, that's just not good enough. So then I, I restitch it, and I put leather here and conchos oh. there and fancy it up, and, and then now I've got a custom sheath to go with my my knife. But you don't sell any of these. No. This is no. all just collecting. It's just part of the collection. Uh, and it's therapy for me too, you know, you, when, when I get time to work with my hands. Do you buy uh, from other people uh, uh, the knives? Uh, oh sure, I get the knives from a lot of different uh, makers. So, okay. Uh, I really can't afford the custom knives because some of those nowadays go for three, four thousand dollars. Big time, wow. But uh, you know, I buy a lot of production knives but they're very nice. I mean knives nowadays are 100% better than they were 20 years ago. The steels are fantastic. Mm. The production people that are, the factories basically that are turning sure. them out are turning out wonderful things with really great steels. But I've also got some uh, antique knives, but the, again, uh, to get a good like Bowie knife from the old days, 
you're talking five thousand dollars do you ever watch uh, the history program where they they do their own uh, I, oh yeah my husband watches that he loves that I forged in fire I yes, watch every forged time in I can fire. absolutely I love it these guys are, it's incredible what they do one person can make that that knife that there was a bowie knife and they have to be able to go through steel, and cut through with this. Coconuts and yes, everything. Yes, yes, it's incredible. I it just is. Said, I said, oh, that can do that? Surely can, my goodness sakes. I tried building my own knives. I had a friend who was a blacksmith, but uh, his stuff was very, it, he didn't have any of the power hammers or that sort of thing. Yeah. And I built a couple of knives, and they were pretty crude, but uh, they took a good edge. And But I, I decided right away that really wasn't what I was into. I liked the knives themselves. And is it just for display? Or how would you use it? What do you do with it? Well, I've studied martial arts as part of the stunt training. Oh. Studied martial arts my whole life, so I know how to use one. Not okay. that I would want to, but my father gave me a knife that uh, he made the handle of the knife out of the metal from a kamikaze that hit his ship in World War II wow. in the Pacific. Mm -hmm. And so he gave me that knife, and I guess that got me started because then I picked up a buck knife here and a little Bowie knife there, and, and now, uh, in fact, I was just telling my good friend Ron. That I've got, I'm looking at a short sword that I really want to get, and it's Italian, and he's Italian, so he's oh, going, um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm looking at it, and I, I do a, a few odd jobs on the mm -hmm. side. I work for the city of Waukegan occasionally. I MC some of their events, and so when something like that happens, I have a little extra money. I put it into my collection. Nice. I don't know what I'm going to do with it all, but. <laughs> so what do you do? You just uh, you can't put it up on a wall. Yeah, uh, I do. You do. Uh, you put it up on a wall. Yeah, some of them. Well, like uh, the other day, I was watching a Western. So uh, as I watched the <laughs> Western, I went up and put on my cowboy hat, which I have several. And I went and rummaged through my collection and picked out the Bowie knife that I had in mind. So you while play I'm, with it while you're watching. I was playing with a knife that and sounds, wearing a cowboy that hat. That looks very familiar, that scene. <laughs> I know my husband. <laughs> no. Yeah, he, uh, he doesn't have a, a cowboy hat, but uh, there's a bunch of hats on it. Uh, but that's incredible. That's a very fascinating. It's just something I'm really interested in. What a in. hobby. What a wonderful hobby. I mean, uh, it does get your creative juices going. It does, uh, and I really enjoy that. Wow. Actually, what I enjoy more than anything is the anticipation of buying a new knife. And do, do you find it like in these flea markets or anything? You can. I, I've found some knives that way, but mostly there are... Oh, 40, 50 makers out there yeah. that, uh, that do the production knives. Yeah. And some are in California, some are in the Philippines, some are in India, uh, Japan, and uh, they send me catalogs. I get tons oh, of catalogs. So, okay. And I look through and I'll see something I like and go, oh, and then I look at the sheath and go, oh, yeah, I could do something with that. And it's just, it's just mm -hmm. a hobby and interest of mine. It kind of comes from the martial arts. But, uh, I mean, there's no store or... Uh, place that you would go to touch or hold it or well there's sorry. knife shows shows yeah uh, and I have been uh, Tucson had a wonderful knife store I've been into some in California mm -hmm. uh, that I just walk in and I look around and I'm just overwhelmed because I want that one and that one and oh that. sure oh it's like a kid in the candy store absolutely but it's just a fun <laughs> hobby I, I've never cut anybody honest you know no, or anything no. like that it's just a collecting thing I yeah. mean, you know some people collect stamps or yeah I collect knives it's not like you're gonna send a letter to everybody in the world no that's right uh, and you know uh, the best stamp is the one that's not canceled that's right so and how, some of those are worth thousands of dollars Oh, this is incredible uh, and I find that you know um, when you just uh, don't well it's not like sell things don't sell things but you know things could be sitting and you're really not paying attention how many years mm -hmm. you have it and all of a sudden they become an antique right uh, you don't know how long it's been or how the age of it but the length of time that you own it it is then turned into an antique are they more expensive uh, I mean I'm sure they must yeah they do they're they're their value must go up for sure. It sure. Does, yeah. I wish I had some of the toys I played with as a child. Oh, sure. Hopalong Cassidy double I holsters. Do, I know. I have a plate. I have a Hopalong Cassidy plate. Uh, it's worth, you know. Isn't that incredible? Some of the toys <clears> I used <throat> to have are worth a and, lot of money and now. And the wind-up metal toys. Right. Um, the, you know, the little 
trolleys or the cars or trucks or whatever, uh, they are, I mean, you can't touch them. They're not in, uh, No. we watch the porn shows, uh, the other porn shows. I mean, not the porn shows that you're thinking. Right, no. The, but the, uh, what's his name out in, in Las Vegas? Oh, the uh, pawn guys? Yeah. Um, oh, some of that, yeah. The, the gold and silver pawn shop guys yeah. or whatever they're called. And they have, I mean, some of these people coming in have things that they found in the attic or right. garage or whatever. And they're incredible. I, I mean, it brings back memories of when I say, hey, I used to play in that kind of pedal car. I remember right. the metal pedal car. I, well, that was a big thing, you know. And they, these people come in and they, they're looking for maybe um, three, four, five hundred dollars or whatever and this guy on the porn you know or pawn pawn Fun. shop pot. you got me worried about I, that no porn, no man. no no <laughs> um the, he offers him so little right well that's his business yeah that's what my husband keeps saying i said i don't like that he's cheating them but they can always say no and walk away yeah and some of them do and some do you're right some do but it's Las Vegas, right? And I think they're looking for the ready cash, mm -hmm. and because he always says to them, "I get his, you know, in cash, and it's yours, whatever." You right. Know. But I say, "Oh no, don't take it, don't take it." <laughs> well, I've seen some of them walk away, but you know, I think that's kind of what got me into. Well, I did Western films for so long. Yeah. You know, when I was a kid, it was Hopalong Cassidy Oh, Holsters, yeah, double, double. Uh, and yeah. I watched, you know, Have Gun, Will Travel. Had and I, I had two older brothers. Yeah. But I was the only girl, and I had double, you know. Or, or Gunsmoke. 40, Forty-fives, you know? yeah. I You'd did. watch those shows as you grow up, and it kind of. Absolutely. And then I was able to be in Westerns and wear the cowboy hats, and I actually worked with uh, James Arness mm. uh, in the show How the West Was Won. Oh, wow. And I worked with Ken Curtis, who was uh, on... Oh, yeah. 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 And, and, you know, it's just, it was so great to see those growing up and then be able to work with and those people. And work with them. Yeah. And I would be hired to, I would be Desperado number four. And I'd come riding into town and get shot and fall off my horse or something like that. So you don't get any credits. Your name isn't listed on any of they that They list it under stunt players. Oh, they stunt... Yes, they do. I rem yeah. They and then it, up here in Chicagoland, I did a lot of uh, stunt coordinating for B films, basically, mm -hmm. because the guy that was set up in Chicago had the big films locked in. They came to him. Yeah. And they well should have. He had a you know experience going back forty years, but a lot of times I would get hired to be the stunt coordinator of you know this little B film over here or the, this little project over here, and that's when I really I all those years of doing stunt work and trying to be safe and teaching stunt work, then I was able to make sure the set was safe, yeah. and I had a blast. The best, uh, the biggest film I ever did, I was second unit stunt coordinator on the movie Michael with John Travolta, where he was an angel. Oh, I remember that picture, yes. And, yeah, that was yeah, so those great. huge wings on him. Yes, they did. Oh my God. And uh, Kept losing his uh, feathers. Oh, a little at a time. Yeah. <laughs> and I met all the people in that film, and they were great. It was just, working on a, a movie set is absolute magic. You, sure. you walk on the set, you feel like you're in Disneyland. Well, you're, you're in La La Land for sure. Yeah, and just the fact you're making all that money kind of helps too. Well, that's really nice. That's yeah, really it does. Nice. Did you ever appear in, on any talk shows while you were out? Uh, I've done a lot of interviews down through you? the years con because of the starting stunt work at the young age and then getting into this and doing a little singing, some voiceovers. So, yeah, I've done, I've done some interviews down through the years. They tell me I'm a good interviewee. Yeah, you are. Uh, you get me talking, it's kind of hard to well, shut no, me Well, no, no. The point is is that you know what you're talking about. You know your business uh, instead of just yes, no, whatever. I mean, it's hard to do an interview without having more to go on. True. You know. Yeah. Um, incredible. I'm, I'm so fascinated by uh, your history with this. And you were able to move in and move out so gracefully. And then you were in the military, so... I had oh. to serve my country. Okay. I took a, a break from doing stunt work and, and films because I wanted to serve my country. That, they didn't, they that didn't, had to happen. They didn't come and pat you on the shoulder and say greetings and salutations, uh, did they? Oh, a lot of guys got that. No, or no. I, you, you, I went in you 1976, enlisted. so you Vietnam enlisted. was over. Yeah. I enlisted. I wanted to yeah. be a firefighter. 
actually what I was thinking at the time was, if, if this movie thing doesn't work out, yeah. or if I get you know the, the bad breaks, I wanted uh, something behind me that I could go into if I needed to. But I never really had to go into the firefighting uh, professionally after no. the Air Force because there was always something going on. It's incredible. How do you? How could you handle the smoke and all that inhalation garbage that you? You train. That's like being a firefighter out in, uh, in Los Angeles with all those uh, fire things. Oh, uh, the, yeah. Outdoor fires are hard. I, when I was at the Barksdale Air Force Base in Louisiana, we had some forest fires because they had a lot of land. Oh. And it was the hardest work. Terrible. And that was flat land. I can't imagine the guys out in California hills. in those hills. Oh, my good grief. It's, it's, it's very rough. But the really hard thing about the Air Force firefighting was the planes. Oh because JP4, the jet fuel, when it's burning, oh, it's, I, it's an inferno. Wow. And I was never hurt on any of the plane accidents that happened. There were a few. I was hurt twice on training accidents. Oh, when train? you're training and you're, oh. you're going through the fire and you're doing, you're rescuing this big metal dummy, you oh. know, uh, I was hurt, I was burned a couple of times. That's bad. Well, that's part of the deal. It was kind of a macho thing. The guys were, you know, and gals uh, were, uh, you know, I'm going to go in there and do the best job possible, and you know we've competed wow. against each other and worked out together. Incredible, incredible. So at this stage of your life, are you really retired from anything? No, you're not retired from anything. No, no. You are a dynamo. You are still going. I have to. Like you're I say, I, I go in, I volunteer for four hours. Then I go to work, go home, get some sleep, start all over again. I have my fun on the weekends. You're, but I have fun at work, too. Uh, it's just uh, I, I have to keep busy. You're like the Energizer Bunny. Yeah. I mean, you, you know, i got to know what kind of batteries you run on because this is incredible. <laughs> well, the bad thing is this time, in, in this stage of my life, as you say, um, I do have a bad knee, a bad oh. back, a bad neck, a bad shoulder, some from stunt work, some not. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, the worst injury was my back. I worked at uh, Medieval Times for a couple of years. Ooh. My lords and ladies, welcome to Medieval Times. I was the master wow, of ceremonies. Wow. And I got hurt on a horse there, not even doing a stunt. Just, you know, horseback. He went a little nuts. I hurt my back. Uh, it was okay, but the walking was just yeah. uh, uh, hard. I'll tell you. And it wasn't flat. It was bumpy walking. Uh, uh, cracks, crevices, trees, rocks, stones, yeah, whatever. Uh, oh, good grief. It's, it, but, you know, like you say, I, I, I try to stay busy. Um, I, I don't. I don't do downtime very well, although I read a lot. That's my downtime, or working on my leather work. And do you have your, a little shop, or you do it in your living room? Or? I do it in the living room, yeah. I set all my stuff up and make a complete mess of everything, and then well, that's the way to do on, it. work on something, then I take it all back and that's put it away. That's the way to do it if you can't make a mess. I mean, that's, Because the know. dining room table is covered oh, with leather. What dining room table? I don't know where my <laughs> dining room table is. Yeah. So this is the dining room. <laughs> After everything's off there, but right. the, the, all things of importance go on the dining room table. Yeah. Used to be the kitchen table, but now everything is transferred into another room, mm -hmm. and it's the dining room table. Yeah. So uh, isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting? That's just, it keeps me sane. And so uh, do you keep in touch with any of these, uh, you know, past, uh, I mean, if he wrote a letter to John Travolta, would he remember you? Would he no, you? no, he wouldn't remember. Me. I met him, you know, and we had a conversation, but that was about it. And and he's a he's a pilot. He, yes, uh, he is. Yeah he, yeah, he has his own jet plane. But yeah, I keep in touch with the stunt guys I worked with for years. Uh, and, and nobody comes out this way. Um, as a matter of fact, one of them came out just recently. We met, and he's in L.A. Yeah. And he came to Chicago for a reason, and I. I took the train down and uh, we had a nice meal and uh, you know went back over old memories and told each other the old lies and how everything nice, and, how nice. but he's one of the guys I worked with for many years at Old Tucson and then he went to LA and he was a very talented guy very incredible. talented incredible incredible yeah he was and, a better stuntman than me actually well you know <laughs> we don't know that we didn't see you can't we don't take anybody's really word for it we have to see with our own eyes well that? you know, most stunt guys are probably five eight five ten you know, I'm, I'm 6'3". I was mm -hmm. a little big. I wasn't as agile. But then when I had to do the fight scenes, I could really make it look I was taking somebody's head and off. And wait a minute. How did they do that? You know, like in these some of these boxing scenes, uh, like uh, with De Niro is in there. And when they look like they're really throwing a punch and they 
supposedly hit the other guy. Well, they miss. Yeah, uh, well, the opponent, but their head shakes back and you see all this water or sweat come off mm -hmm. of them. How does that, how do you do that? Well, you, you get sweated up real good, spritzed, they call it, yeah. and then when you snap your head like you've been hit, it flies. That's why I have arthritis in my neck. Oh. I did so many fight scenes where I'm getting, you know, you're getting hit this way and this way, and I can't even do that like, anymore. Yeah. <laughs> that, uh, you know, I have a, a lot of arthritis in my neck from it. Oh, wow. That's just, yeah. But, you know, they throw the punch, it misses, they dub the sound in later. And a, a good stunt coordinator and a good stuntman can make it look like they're just, well, you've seen the movies, they're ripping yeah. somebody's head off. That's right, that's yeah. right. But, wow. Uh, it, it, a lot of fun. Or Rocky, 120, 300. Yeah. <laughs> How many more Rocky shows can we see? My God. But, you know, he was in good shape. I mean, that was... Uh, oh, yeah. I mean, that was... Uh, well, in Rambo, he had really cool knives. Knives. Yeah, uh, I've got a couple uh, In my collection, I have a couple of Rambo knives. Interesting. Yeah, Interesting. had to, you know. Wow. And the martial arts. And the he martial was in the martial arts. arts oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, anything with um, Chuck Norris? He, no, I did a I did a live show with Chuck Norris one time in a, a great big theater on the south suburbs of Chicago. That's got to be Drury Lane. No, yes. Um, no, it was oh, I could, the Omni. Oh, the Omni. Great big, and uh, he came on, and I was the MC. And uh, actually, what happens? We had this big stunt fight going on, and then I said, "Cut!" I was like the director slash MC. And I said, okay, bring in the stuntman, and out walks Chuck Norris. And wow. the crowd went Wild. nuts. Wow, oh, I know. <laughs> and he walked up to me, and I looked at him and went, you know, See, I know. <laughs> you're, just, you're just not the right type. Oh, good You grief. know, I, I'm sorry, we'll pay you for the day, sir. And he was real humble looking, oh, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I shook his hand. I said, uh, you know, we'll use you on the next film. And he, he said, well, thanks, and walks off. The crowd went nuts. Oh. Then we brought in one of our stunt guys that was already set up to do the thing. Yeah. Because he was going to get a chair broken across his back, Ooh. and then he beats everybody up. But you should have heard that. It was all martial artists in this big I can imagine. get together at the yeah. Omni. There's several thousand martial artists there, and Chuck Norris walks out on the yeah. stage. It was a magic moment. I got a really good picture of that. Oh, wow. That's incredible. I've got well, pictures we, like we've stacks We've got to do a part two yeah. of this. I cannot let you go with just one airing. My, my viewers will not, I mean, I'll get calls and mail. And, uh, so this is going to be a part one of a part two <laughs> okay. uh, with uh, John Pierce, P-E-A-R-C-E. -E. Uh, yeah, that's the Scottish spelling. It's okay. People have spelled it the other way my whole life. I have to keep going back over it. Okay, I told you we're not going to hold it against you. Okay. Just because you're, and they make good whiskey too. Well, yeah. and I, I have a kilt too. Oh, do you? Oh, absolutely. Uh, would you belong to a clan? What's your clan? My clan would have been McDonald's. The McDonald's. Pierces were a very small clan, but so they allied themselves with the McDonald's. So I have a McDonald tartan kilt. Oh, my goodness. I wear it to the Renaissance Fair sometimes. Oh, my goodness. I wouldn't wear it outside right now. Uh, no, no, no. It's not good for cold weather. I don't, th I don't think your legs could handle it. <laughs> I don't think they it's could either. It's a little chilly. Yes, it is, but <clears> I, got, <throat> I got tons and tons of clothes, so oh, how I'm nice. set for it. Well, you know, uh, this is, I'm just so engaged in conversing with you. I, I'd love you to sing. I, I don't want to waste any more of your time, but, uh, oh, this, uh, you know. I love this. I, so what are you going to uh, do for us? Uh, well, um, I'm not really, I don't consider myself a, a, a singer. What I'd, I've done my whole life has mm -hmm. been uh, like the backup singer. Okay. To somebody who always has the higher voice. It's almost always the tenors or the sopranos singing yeah. the melody, and then I'd come in underneath. Uh, but uh, in 1954, Tennessee Ernie Ford. Oh, I remember Bless that. your pea-picking little heart, That's he would say. Right. <laughs> I remember that show. He sang uh, 16 tons. Yeah. It was the song of the year in 1954, which happens to be the year I was born, as a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. And so that's right in my wheelhouse. So I'm going to do that for the Creative Arts Festival. And uh, I, hope, I hope people like it. I'm sure they will. I'm sure they will. So do you want me to give you an introduction to Well, I'll just, I'm, I'm going to use this handheld. Okay, do it, do it, do it. Well, let's see. Um, like I say, I am not. I don't consider myself a great. Well, let singer. me give you an introduction. Okay, go ahead. Uh, this is uh, John Pierce, and he is going to be singing "16 Ton" um, and uh, a cappella with his beautiful voice. Uh, take it away, John. 
Some people say a man is made out of mud. A poor man's made out of muscle and blood. Muscle and blood and skin and bones. A mind that's weak and a back that's strong. You load 16 tons. What do you get? Another day older and deeper in debt. St. Peter, don't you call me, cause I can't go. I owe my soul to the company store. Boom, 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 boom. That's the background. Okay. <laughs> I was born one morning when the sun didn't shine. I picked up my shovel and I walked to the mine. I loaded 16 tons of number nine coal. And the boss man said, well, bless my soul. You load 16 tons and what do you get? Another day older and deeper in debt. St. Peter, don't you call me, cause I can't go, I owe my soul, I owe my soul, I owe my soul to the company store. Very good. Thank you. That's right in my Very wheelhouse. Thank you. Good. That's Very That's the sort of thing I can sing. Very good. But I, I really like to sing uh, duets or, or trios where I've got the bass line. I love to sing in church. I've got the bass line going and I can really hammer really? it out oh, wow. and let the other people worry about the, uh, the melody. <laughs> <laughs> what a voice. Well, what thank you. I, I, I love doing voiceovers. I'd kind of like to get back into that now that, you know, I'll be retiring in a couple of years and get back into voiceovers would be nice because I did it for a long time in yeah. Chicago, but Really, in order to do it, I'd have to move back to Chicago, and I really don't want to do that. I love living up here in, in Lake County. Lake County. I love it. Uh, and I, you know, my family goes back in Waukegan for generations. I feel at home there. Uh, you know, I, I'll find an agent. You know, we're country up, up in this area. Yeah, we're, we're country. We're country. We yeah. But we're close enough to Chicago to be able to zip down there on the train and that's have true. fun, that's and true. then zip back up here. Yeah, that's true. We're and right by the lake, I love it. Yeah, we're we're uh, we're country out here when. There's just so much um, brick and steel and glass, uh, you know, downtown Chicago. But, you know, there are people that like that. They, they don't oh, yeah. like uh, <clears throat> spreads. They don't like grass. They don't like any of that. They're well, I love Chicago. It's the most beautiful skyline in the world, to my opinion. It's very pretty. I love to go down there and enjoy it and uh, then get back up here. Home. I lived in Chicago for a long time because that's where the agents were yeah. for voiceovers and for doing stunt work and, and acting. Uh, but I like it so much better, you know, it's just, I can park a car on the street, you know, I don't have to fight for parking spaces. Oh, well, or, or get your car towed. Yeah, you know? yeah. Or, or go around and around and around in those uh, oh, parking uh, garages. Oh, yeah. Or the garage, yeah, parking garage. Too. Oh, I, I really like Waukegan. I'm a, I'm a Waukeganite, even though I was born in Arizona. Because we would always come up here because the grandparents were up here. Family is up and here. And uncles, you know, my brother's up here. You know, and I'm a big Bear fan and a Bulls fan and White Sox and uh, the Cubs. White Sox, I was going to say. That's South Side, you know. Yeah, I don't know. My family was always White Sox. So. And Black Hawks and every, everything else Chicago. Oh, all, uh, all the sports. That's incredible. Oh, I'm a sports nut. You know what I'm doing Sunday night, don't you? Well. Well, uh-huh. 52. <laughs> it's going to be that's, great. That's uh, uh, anniversary 52, yeah. Oh, yeah. you know what I like about this is I really don't have a favorite team. And listen, I was going to ask you, which one are you, do uh, you have any bets on anybody? No, no, I don't gamble. Uh, no, I, I, uh, I mean, it's just a friendly thing. Yeah, you know? well, I've got, a, I've got a couple $1 bets with Like, people. well, a pizza for you or a beer for them yeah. or whatever. Now, see, if the Bears were playing, I'd be a wreck. Oh. But because I really don't have any favorite team, I'm just going to watch for the football. The football. Every play. Yeah. I've been invited to parties, and I go, thank you very much, but no. I, I want to be able to sit in front of the TV Enjoy. and watch every play yeah. and, every, and, you know, and the commercials. So who's, yeah, those commercials, do you know how much money they run oh. for? Yes. Holy cow. Now, if you could do a voice something on that yeah that would be incredible sure would that'd be fun wow. but you, you're going to ask me who i think is going to win yeah i'd like to see the eagles win but i don't think so i think the patriots are going to get two in a row hmm. tom brady is he's the best quarterback that's ever lived 
Well, that's a lot of they, people going to say. That's what they said about Troy Aiken. They played well, he was darn good too, and see. Montana was good, and uh, oh, our own yeah. uh, Jimbo was good. Yeah, I mean, Jim. there's great quarterbacks down through the years, but by the time he retires, he's going to have all the statistics, and he's going to have all those rings, oh. and it's he's the, he's the greatest. Well, you only have ten fingers to you know eight and two thumbs. How With his money, there? you could buy more fingers. Oh, buy more <laughs> fingers. That's very good. Okay. No, it's it's going to be. I think <clears> the Patriots going to win it. But we'll see. I'd like to see the Eagles do it. Well, you know, um, and so if in case that should be, uh, what's coming to you? Just a dollar, or I've got. I, I bet a dollar with some friends. Oh, a dollar. Yeah. Well, well, a pizza would be good. It costs more than a dollar. Yeah, it certainly does. So, uh, and a couple rounds of beer that would helps to wash it down. I mean, I don't think you have to worry about looking for your figure. You know. There's no prom dress you have to get into. No, right? that's true. That's true. Um, no, I, uh, you know, you mentioned a couple beers, and that's one thing I, I did want to say is that the VA hospital saved my life. Uh, let's see, I'm 64. Nine years ago, I had a real problem with alcohol. Mm -hmm. I wasn't performing. I didn't feel like I was getting anywhere. I was in a dead-end job, and um, I kind of lost it mentally and started drinking too much. And I went through the programs at the VA, yeah. and they saved my life. Really? Yeah. So nowadays, when I go to I go to a, a little tavern in uh, in uh, Waukegan to have breakfast on Saturdays, and I walk in and they have a Virgin Mary. Just tomato juice. The, all the fancy stuff, real yeah. hot. No vodka. No vodka. So you know, they really the the VA and a serving in the military. And no. Uh, yeah, they, it saved my life. Okay, well that's good, that's yeah. good. And that's another reason why I like to volunteer, because I can help people out who are going through it, going you know through what, it now, you know what they're and I can through. talk to them about, you know, this is what happened to me, maybe it'll help you. Well, you know, so you really don't take any drink anymore, no. anything? No, Are you afraid that once you break that, you know, oath that you've made uh, with yourself that you might fall or falter? No, not really. I don't have the uh, desire for it anymore. Oh. Um, I go to, I have an AA meeting, meeting that I go yeah. to and I do service work for them. Okay. And, uh, you know, the wonderful parties we went to at the AA, uh, you know, in, yeah. in Waukegan. And uh, it's just, it's not so much a promise to myself not to do it or worrying that I would go too far. It's just now that a lot of my friends are in AA, we yeah. just kind of keep an eye on each other to make oh. sure everything's okay and when when somebody new comes into our meeting uh, we we talk to them we try to help them out I just the other day a, a guy came in and I think he was living on the street but he, he really wanted to quit and he had oh. a, a, he had a very thin jacket oh. so I had a, a really nice coat that I hadn't worn in years so I went and got it and gave it to him I mean that's just I'm that trying to give good. back so it's just it's kind of a, it's kind of an oath between those of us that are been through it you know, and that's another thing that I, I want to, you know, make a statement about is that uh, in weather like this, when it's warm out, it's bad enough when it's warm out and you have no place to go. Right. But uh, under those viaducts, under those bridges, uh, there are people that are living there. Yes. There are veterans that are living there. Huh. They have their families living there. I know. They have nowhere to go and they have no clothing appropriate for the weather. Where could someone give? What could they do if they've got, you know, um, extra clothing that they're, you know, not uh, using or they've outgrown? What do they do? Well, I know uh, there, there's a lot of coat drives, but I know we have one at the uh, FHCC, the VA hospital. Uh, they've got a great big box, and people bring in coats. barely used or, or new uh, coats okay. and that sort of thing. In fact, just the other day, uh, one of the people that was helping a, a two homeless men and trying to get them into the program, yeah. uh, he took them over there and they were trying on coats. Coats. Uh, just as I happened to, to happen to walk by. Oh, it's so heartbreaking. It's yes, terrible. It it's just terrible. Well, I was never homeless because wow. I had the VA. See. I went to them and said, I need help. Oh, see. I can't stop. I want to stop, but I can't. And uh, they... They took me by the hand, and I went through the program, actually twice, because it didn't take the first time. Well, sometimes uh, it takes two times. And, uh, you know, <laughs> I, I'm not kidding. It saved my life. 
Well, th then you are a, a, a wonderful speaker on behalf of, uh, of the VA. That's what I try to do. Because uh, here you are in person able to tell the story of right. how it helped you. And I'm doing, you know, I've got a really good job and a lot of good friends good. and a wonderful life. That's good. And, uh, you know. And it, a terrific voice. Well, thank you very much. Oh, <laughs> you almost sound like Elvis Presley. Oh, you know, I, I don't have the talent to do <laughs> imitations, but if they want a if they want a deep voice, I got it for them. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, it, it you know I can't oh, take any credit for it. The, the good a, Lord gave it to is me. Is that but, a uh, baritone voice? What is that? Yeah, a baritone bass. Oh wow. I mean, I can sing way down there. Oh wow. <laughs> I just I love it. I just well, thank uh, you. <clears throat> We've never had anyone on the program like this. You are just spectacular. Well, thank you. I've, John, I've, spectacular. I've had a lot of fun. People tell me I should write a book, and I, I, I can't write. That, that's a gift that I don't have. Well. I get a ghostwriter. That's right. Tell your story to somebody who will be able to put it down for you. Yeah, that, that's, that's a good thought, because I am getting a little uh, long in the tooth, you know. Well, you know, but this is <laughs> just a, do you have anything else you'd like to sing for us? No, that that's the only thing I've got going. I, 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 like I said, I really wanted to do a, a duet with this really talented uh, younger man, a uh, black man who sings gospel. Yeah. And uh, when we when we sang it a couple of times, he would like uh, he'd be way up high in his voice, and he'd put in that gospel lilt, and then I'd be down here trying wow. to back him up. And, uh, but then he, he just found out he's uh, diabetes and he's going through a lot and he yeah. just doesn't have the time. And listen, it, it takes strength to be able to sing. And maybe he's, you know, physically not capable. Yeah, he's, he's it a... takes strength to just belt out a note, let alone do a whole song. And Here I thought we we're going to hear something from Showboat or, you know, oh, Old Man well, see, that's River. The... Now that I can <clears> do. <throat> can but, you? Uh, most of the songs that people sing that are the big songs from shows, like, you know, Rodgers and Hammerstein, yeah. Learners and Lowe, all those that I was raised on, uh, there's, they're tenors. Tenors. They're singing way up there. Yeah, but, uh, you know, Old Man River is not tenor. Yeah. I could do Old Man River. I don't, I don't know the song, but Old Man River, yeah. Oh, that's in my wheelhouse, you know. That's there, nice. There's not many solos, though, for the, uh, the guys with voices down here. Oh, you know how many times I watched that uh, on, on noir movies, the old pictures, uh, just to hear that gentleman sing, because he sang with such feeling and depth, and the voice just carried it over. It was just, and of course, it's uh, the South and the ladies with the dresses, and it just beautiful. Just mm -hmm. everything was just beautiful. Well, what I would do a lot of times, like when I would do shows in high school and then in university, was I would take the, the, the guy singing, Oh, what a beautiful morning. And I'd just transpose it down to, Oh, what a beautiful morning. Mm -hmm. That way. And I was taking music theory anyway, so I knew how to transpose things yeah. down. I, I did know. I don't anymore. But, you, uh, know. you know... <laughs> You just didn't use it, but you you yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like I used to speak pretty good Spanish when I lived in Tucson. Didn't use it for a long time. Now I can barely order food. Well, go get a nacho. We got a store over here. <laughs> they, they take care of it. That's right. still my favorite food, though. Born and raised in Tucson. That was it. Was wonderful oh. being raised there. I wouldn't go back to the desert. Wow. It's too hot. It's it's very dry. It's very brown. I like the green around green. here. I like the water. I love the lake. Uh, but growing up there, I was a Boy Scout, and uh, you know, hiking all those trails and climbing the cliffs and rappelling down. And what about I mean, scorpions? I, I oh yeah, heard that uh, people you have to check your shoes in the morning every morning because they crawl inside the shoe. Nice and warm for them. Uh, yeah. And uh, and get stung. That's really bad. Yeah, I never had trouble with uh, scorpions, but uh, the great big long, really nasty looking centipedes. Oh. Yellow leg centipedes, mm. those are the ones that really creep me out. Rattlesnakes, no problem. In fact, for a little while when I was going to University of Arizona, we would go out and hunt snakes and then bring them back so they could melt them for the antivenom. Oh, yeah, the venom. Then yeah, we'd take yeah, them yeah. back out to the desert and let them go. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was getting $17 a snake and I thought I was rich. Well, you that know. was back in 1971. Well, that's when that was good money then. Yeah, I that thought was, it was big fantastic. money. Big yes, big it was. Money. 
No, I, um, see, what we have here in Illinois, um, besides unemployment and everybody's leaving the state, is the scenic view. Oh, it's beautiful. beautiful. I love it. The lake, the, the tall buildings, uh, and, and of course the surroundings, whatever. And it's life. The water brings life. Water brings life. Yes. In the desert, I'm not a desert person. I could never, you know, I couldn't do that. I, uh, no. you know, you have to be a certain person to be able to do that. And you have to be able to have the thick skin to live in that heat. Yeah. The heat is just uh, it's I mean, too much. Uh, I mean, I could take heat, but my husband's an asthmatic. <laughs> he likes the cold because there's no humidity or no, you know, yeah. he can handle it. And we're, you know, diametrically opposed mm. to each other because uh, I like to be out in the sunshine and he has to be where there's air conditioning. Right. So, well, I, I like it up here, the green, the, the I, I'm a bicyclist. Oh, yeah, good. Uh, and uh, so there's beautiful trails that go through the forest preserves. Sure. And I, I just love it. And I, I love going up into Wisconsin, going to the Dells. Uh, there's a place up there that uh, friends of mine and I go to, uh, Devil's Lake, up by the Devil's Dells. Lake, yeah. And we repel off the cliffs, mm. and we camp out. And in the desert, when you camp out, it's uh, you've got to be careful of the centipedes, the scorpions, oh, the, the velvet ants, they're even worse than all of them, and nobody knows about them. The uh, and fire ants, the fire yeah, ants. Well, they, they have velvet ants that are like huge, and they have a little, like a, a almost a little coat of velvet. And oh. when they sting you, believe me, you know you've been stung. Well, where do you go for safety? What do you do? Even though they build these communities, you're not free from any of that. That's nature out there. That's yeah. real nature. Yeah, I, I was born and raised right next to an Indian reservation, so there was no building on that. It was all desert. Desert. And so we had scorpions, tarantulas. Oh, I can't stand that. Oh. Creepy crawlies. I can't do creepy crawlies. No, the tarantulas aren't too bad. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, they're not too bad. Really? You want to see something as big as your fist? With all those black hairy arms on your kitchen table or crawling across your floor? I used to pick them up and hold them in my hand. Good grief. The bad ones are the black widow spiders. Oh. They're nasty. Well, they eat their mate. Well, that would make it pretty nasty to me, too. Well, the black widow. I <laughs> think so. <laughs> but there, I, a friend of mine got bit a, on the a hand. A one-night stand and that's it, baby. Yeah, that's it. It's you over. had it. That's it. He got bit on the hand and he had phantom pains for weeks oh, my. going up his arm wow, from a wow. black widow. So that was that and the velvet ants, they were the worst out there. And See, the heat. No, nobody knows that. They try to sell you this property out there, you know, and say it's so wonderful out here. My brother keeps telling me, California's wonderful. I said, oh, with its fires, its mudslides, the earth, God opening the earth to swallow everybody. And too many people. And oh, there's an unbelievable amount of people. <clears throat> Why do people from the East Coast think they're going to make it better on the West Coast? It's going to fall off and go into the Pacific very shortly. Well, it might. It's a great, living in Tucson for all those years, I love to vacation in San Diego, mm -hmm. go up to L.A., go up to Santa Barbara, and then go right back out. Yeah. California is beautiful, it, it, but it's, it does have its problems. Well, all those people, and driving on the freeways in California... It's incredible, yeah. Well, and it's called a freeway, and it is a freeway after they paid for everything. Yeah. Up here, we were supposed to have uh, this be a freeway on the tollway, uh, they were and not. that's been paid so many years ago, I can't tell you. But, you know, uh, all the politicians got their finger in the pot. Yeah. And so uh, it proceeds to be uh, the tollway. Yeah. Uh, so unless, until we can get it another way. Uh, the freeway like it's supposed to be, uh, but um, uh, the cars, it's incredible, just incredible. When I go to Chicago, I take the train. Train is better. Yeah. Safer. Yeah. Safer, much safer. Can you imagine every day on the tollway going downtown or however you would go downtown? Well, when I, worked, when I worked at Medieval Times, I'd have to go out a rush hour hmm. from Chicago to get to Schaumburg. Sh yeah. And and that would take an hour and a half. Coming back home after the show, there was hardly any traffic, 20 minutes. Yeah. I meant before when you said Medieval Times, I meant uh, 
the one in Bristol, Wisconsin. Uh, uh, the Renaissance Fair. The Renaissance Yeah, Fair. I've worked there a couple of times yeah, in a very small uh, capacity, but yeah. I go there every year. I have a complete Scottish outfit I wear, nice. you know, with the real sword and the real knives. And then uh, lately, though, I've been going as a pirate. Arr, oh. Because that's the really big thing right now, after pirate. the pirate Caribbean movies. So I got oh, the hat, yeah. and I got pirate swords and the correct, you know. Uh, now, do you, do you make any of those? These are all purchased? Well, I, what those? I do is I make as much as I can generally out of leather. Oh, you uh, the just belts, do the sheaths. Sure, oh, okay, and yeah. the sheaths and everything. So okay. I try to make as much as I can with my hands yeah. or buy something and then, you know, Recreate fix it up my it. Yeah, way. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so, yeah, I love the Renaissance Fair. That's why I loved working at Medieval Times. I could wear those outfits and ride a yeah. horse, you know. That's terrific. And get to talk to people with a, with a great big beautiful horse under me. With that great big beautiful voice. Yeah, you know, oh, I, your voice is a lot of the guys That's that a were terrific voice. What can I say? A lot of the guys I worked with, the knights, and the, the, the we would uh, we would go out and, and uh, have a lot of fun with the ladies. We all had the long hair. Nice. Yeah. Wow, I remember seeing a jousting, and they were jousting, and the boy, if you really get hit with those uh, poles, you, you fall down. That that's hurting. Oh know? yeah, that's stunt work for sure. Wow. Yeah, some of the hardest stuff I ever did was on horseback. Hmm. I had several. Uh, I was in one uh, TV movie called Desperado, where I was part of the bad guys, of course. <laughs> and uh, the good guy threw a stick of dynamite down, and some of the guys were on horseback, but my part was to just, I caught the, the, the saddle horn and was just swinging up into the saddle when the explosion went off, so I used that to catapult myself backwards. Up. And we were working in a sandy uh, wash, uh, arroyo. It, it had water in it when it rained, but then it was dry the rest of the time. Yeah. And so everybody thought the sand was fine, but when I went back and landed, under the sand was a nice big sharp rock. Oh, yeah, oh, that was oh, that was not oh, fun. Oh, oh, that's yeah, that was not fun. Uh, uh, I I worry about the animals, the horses in these pictures. Uh, you know, I um, I used to love to watch Ben Hur, and Charlton Heston is my very favorite. Uh, they've had on the film noir uh, recently, oh, a lot of times now. Uh, is uh, the agony and the ecstasy, mm -hmm. and I just—he's wonderful. He plays—he plays these epic, um, you know, marvelous uh, uh, positions, and I—I uh, I, I mean, I couldn't picture him any other way. No. I mean, you know, uh, I think he played in a couple of cowboy pictures, but uh, yes, he did. Uh, you know, and then I—I—they gave a. Uh, a rolling, uh, this was like before it started, about the horses that they used mm -hmm. um, for uh, the um, chariot race and things. And then they said they, because I kept seeing these horses uh, tumble and fall, and they had this huge chariot behind them that th didn't come up behind them. And he said, well, uh, on the air, because they had him, he said uh, that uh, they had to have trip wires out there because the horses were working yeah. uh, and they had to have a trip to trip the horses I thought that was very cruel I well, back in the old days in, in westerns a, a lot and, and uh, other movies like that with, with horses uh, they would trip them they uh, they used a flying Y what they called a flying Y which actually had uh, things on their front legs to pull them out from underneath but that's no longer done that that's been out for generations I, I and just don't do that anymore I just I just felt very badly and my heart just sunk because these horses were beautiful, mm -hmm. the ones that he was riding on his chariot, just beautiful, the chariot races, so beautiful white stallions, and the horses, the other horses were wonderful. And uh, after I saw that and heard him say that, I said, I never knew that. I yeah. mean, all, all these years of my life, I never knew that. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, they I, don't do it anymore. I, I lost... I didn't. I don't want to see it anymore. I don't want to see the picture anymore. And I used to wait to see those mm -hmm. chariot races because it, it was, was something. It was phenomenal. I've yeah. never seen anything like that. And they lost, I think, one or two men oh, uh, in yeah. the chariot race. They yeah. got run over. Yeah. It, this wasn't planned. This is what happened. I just, uh, I just, I just can't watch it anymore. Uh, I feel entirely different. No, I well, can't do it. I saw one horse get injured on a set. But 
the, the people that would bring those horses in, the Wranglers, they loved those horses. Those horses were a source of income. Oh, yeah. So when a horse got hurt, it was, it was bad. They did everything in their power to make sure that didn't happen. And here's this old cowboy, mm -hmm. uh, tough as, as leather, I mean, <laughs> and his horse was hurt, and he knew he was going to have to put it down, oh. and uh, he's crying like a baby. Oh, that's so heartbreaking. Yeah, he I was just do it. tears can't coming do out, it. and you know, he didn't care who saw it. It was one of his babies. Mm. So the, uh, I'll tell you, I saw a lot of things with horses, and they take very good care of the horses nowadays. Now, yep, in the yeah. old days, the yeah. 30s, 40s, even getting into the 50s, the horses yeah, were, was, were hurt. They, they, and he said, because uh, I think he did a, um, it was an interview with uh Dick Cavett or, yeah, it must have been Dick Cavett. So, you know, it's a long time ago. Uh, and he said, because uh, he asked about how the animals were performing, whatever, and he said, yeah, they had to put down a couple after they got hurt. And I felt that was so bad. There was no need for that. And, and you know, he, they shot this uh, in Italy, and those horses were beautiful. Oh, they were. Magnificent animals. Just uh, I don't like anyone that really, you know, for their own, in, you know, their own uh, preference uh, to make themselves wonderful or have to hurt uh, another person or animal. And, you know, do it on your own. Do what you have to do. Right. do don't take out somebody else's life or whatever. Yeah. I, I feel very badly about that. When I worked at Medieval Times, I was the MC and I was up on the stage and the horses were coming out to do part of the show and one of the horses went down. And at first, everybody thought, oh, you know, the crowd's just, so everybody ran over to these are beautiful Andalusian stallions. Yeah. They're worth thousands and thousands yeah. of dollars. And the horse had a heart attack and died. Oh, oh my goodness. It had nothing to do with uh, him being hurt. It, it wasn't doing any stunts or anything. He was just running out like a horse would do. And you know, that happens to people as well. Sometimes that just happens. We're, we're off, we're, we're, the show is over already. I can't believe it. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I told you if you got me this talking, is gonna you couldn't be, shut this me up. This is going to be part two. We're going to do okay. a part two. So thank you for watching. Have a wonderful evening, day. Watch yourself. Check the weather. Be warm. Be safe. And be we're going to have John back on the program because he's wonderful. And it's a terrific voice. Thank you very much. My pleasure. I enjoyed it. God bless you. Thank God bless you, you so much.